Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here. This is one of my backburner tanks, so to speak, in that uh, lots of endlers are born in here and lots are raised in here. It's kind of a grow out tank. It used to be an aquascape tank, uh, and I need to. I'm cleaning everything off, and it, it might be going bye bye. Uh, I think this might be the tank of the tanks that needs to go bye bye. Now, one of the last things I need to do is get those pencil fish. You see there's one or two in here. Uh, I need to get them out. Uh, but first, before that, I need to address an issue that is a big one for this tank. And it may be one that you've encountered, or if you're searching for this, that you have possibly already encountered. So, let me start off by showing you an afflicted fish. So here we go. This is an endler female. And if you know endlers or guppies, they should look like this one. They should have a full belly and, and not be moving or, and be moving so much you can barely keep track of them. Now, same with this gal back here. She's a good example of what one should look like that's fine, healthy, uh, and doing well. Look at the gal up here. She is sunken belly. Her gravid spot is a dull color. Um, and I'll try to find another one. There's another one that's probably got it. No discernible curves in the body uh, that the females usually have. That gravid spot is actually huge. So she may be pregnant and literally have nothing in her stomach. And so what what's going on here? She's got sunken belly or a parasite. And so this can also, um, it can also express itself any type of fish, but usually you'll see, like this one is very sick. Usually you'll see lethargy, uh, poor coordination, uh, their uh, fecal matter will be white and stringy. Um, a lot of times they'll also get ick or some sort of other... Um, parasite or fungal slash uh, bacterial infection and while they're down uh, they have a tough time here's another one that's got it right now too so what what do you do well what I do is I always like to add some garlic to the tank that is a first line of action you should be quarantining your fish when you get them in the first place but hey sometimes you get a fish from a friend you think it's all good and uh, maybe it gets the parasite or maybe it came in on a plant or uh, you know whatever it may be now here we go what's also bad is bloody uh, stool coming out of your fish so there's one with bloody stool. It should just be brown, you know, or green, just like normal fish colors, <laughs> tan. Um, so if if you see that green, if you see the the uh, really deep crimson, that's no good, and it could actually mean that there's an ulcer or a worm or something in there that's really digging things up in that poor fish's stomach but if you just see the sunken and the white that means that they literally are not keeping any of their nutrients the worms are just keeping it all or parasites whatever they may be some sort of parasite and then as i said the secondary infections and things are almost assured if you let this go on very long <clears throat> so what i've already done what you're going to want to use is general cure so the first thing I always do is I give an Epsom salt bath in a little tub to my uh, fish that just basically uh, you know it it detoxifies their slime coat and then causes them to produce more of that slime coat and kind of get it um, get it functioning get it uh, going uh, if that makes sense kind of uh, I don't know if you ever put salt on a slug it kills it but it causes this it pulls the moisture out and kind of intensifies that and that's what they need also to kind of get rid of things and it's just a kind of a good cure-all in a lot of cases as well as the garlic for treating a fish doing a salt dip now I'm not going to get into salt dips or adding salt to your tank you can look that up but guppies are very tolerant to it um, guppies and endlers they 
can handle it no problem actually quite a bit of brackishness so you can look that up Epsom salt you don't want to just use table salt <laughs> and put it in there though so don't do that now once you've done that you've done a uh, you know a decent water change get down into the mulm is what I usually do because that's where these parasites usually have the second stage of their life um, and by the way the males unfortunately this beautiful male the way you see it expressed in them sometimes is it looks like they have a hunchback they kind of have a sunken stomach but it manifests in them looking like they're hunchbacked and they've got kind of like a bend in them so that's how, how you can tell males may have it, in guppies and endlers anyways. So you do those treatments, you change the water, and uh, now you're ready to actually treat them. So what I did in here is I put, this is 20 gallons, so I put two packets of API General Cure into the tank and stirred it around, let it sit, you take your charcoal filter out because you don't want that filtering out the medicine, the medication, which it will. And then you just have a normal uh, mechanical and bacterial or biological filter running and let the fish uh, soak in this concoction. Now, if you want, you can drop the water level so it's a little more, a uh, little less water to treat. If they're in a big tank, you can move them to a smaller tank. For me, anything 20 gallons or less, I treat everyone and assume that it could have gotten to everyone in the tank. Also remember, when you're using these nets, you have to assume that those little teeny parasites, which could be worms, they could be nematodes, they could be little... Um, they could be a, a range of little critters, some being visible, some being so small you can't even see them. Uh, so, just be careful... I, I dilute about a cap full of bleach into about a cup of water. So usually two or three caps of bleach into uh, like a, a container, a beaker. And then I just soak my nets in that for a little bit um, if I've been dealing with this. Also your own chlorinated water, soaking them in that for a little bit and, um, and then air drying them out for you know an extended period of time will probably take care of it. But just to be safe... Um, there are certain things that can survive being out of water, being air dried, all that. So I'd treat it with the bleach if you can. Uh, moving on. So I've already done that. And then you wait 48 hours. You give them a water change. And then you fill it back up. So you got your normal level of water. And then you give them another dose of the general cure. And you can repeat this a couple times until they're doing better. But what I like to do, and my little tr trick that's not a, you know, nothing proprietary here, I've seen a lot of people do this over the years, is, well, so they have a parasite in them, right? So how do you get at it? Well, it's in the water, but you want them to ingest the stuff, the medicine. So what I do is I take d dry Daphnia, because guppies, most fish, really love dry Daphnia. I take some just... Uh, Brand X Tropical Fish Flakes, put that in here, mm -hmm. and then I I like personally Fluval Bug Bites, the Tropical Formula or or Cichlid or whatever fish it is you're dealing with, uh, Bug Bites does a nice job. So I get that, and then I put it all together. So next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to take these packets of the API general cure and I'm actually using this is kind of odd but I'm using a spray paint can lid because it's got a central section and you'll see in a sec why I like to use that um, and it's not necessary in the least but uh, I use it for a specific reason so you'll see that in a sec um, and then you're just gonna cut these a lot of times you can tear the general cure packets too, but they're just little foil blister packs. So then we're gonna shake it out into the vessel. Let me set you down for one sec. You're gonna be looking at the counter while I do this because I don't wanna spill any. And uh, it's just gonna go a lot faster. You guys know what putting powder into a vessel looks like, I would hope. You've probably cooked at some point in your life. 
And then usually I'll take whatever's left in there and I'll kind of just give it a shake. Like whatever didn't come out in a big clump, I'll kind of fold around and play with in the packet and get it out of there. Um, set you down for a sec again, but you can see there's some here. And so I'm just going to scoot that into the container real quick too. It's good to use a clean surface. Um... So that you can do this and it has a funky smell to it so just know that nothing odd outside the normal but you don't want to be gloves might be a good idea not necessary but it's not gonna hurt anything so now we've got this mix of powder and food and the the fish they're not gonna eat that powder it tastes weird to them now you can add minced garlic to this, or you can add water with garlic uh, paste in it, and that will work just fine. I'm going to scoot the rest of this over. Uh, kind of messy because I'm doing it one-handed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cap, because I like that you could also use a, a baster or something, but I like to take the same water that they've been in, and then it's got this exterior wall around that center wall where the food is so this is dry still but then it's got a little notch and that's the spot where you can then allow water to get in and you can mix in that central area without all of it coming out which isn't like a huge deal but it keeps it more confined and you can add more water as needed um, and I, the reason I like doing this with uh, not just this but other things, I like these caps. Like when I'm getting um, mosquito larvae and uh, Daphnia out of a, you know out of something, and I've got it um, kind of condensed into one area, then I'll take like a pipette or something, and I will actually try to scoot more of it into like one into the center one into the sides or whatever so then you're just going to add this straight to the tank make sure you get that food that's been mixed you can let it sit a lot longer than i just did um i'm just showing you that uh i'm just doing this quickly in the interest of uh getting it done on film and it's not very exciting so then you can mix it around a little bit but Honestly, don't mix it around a ton yet. Let them come eat. So if you look closely, there are granules all over in the water. And they can't avoid those. They're going to be just absorbing them. So Miss Sicko here will be absorbing them. It looks like it's snowing. So everybody's going to get treated. And now the next round of medication that I would be doing if I were you is also Ick X. If you see any signs of Ick. And if you don't see any signs of ick, you can be treating with erythromycin, which is just a fairly gentle, uh, you know, it's humans use it too, but it's a fairly gentle um, antibiotic, and that will help clear out any secondary infections and uh, allow you to proceed from there. So I'm going to let them eat, come to the top where I'm not standing here. You can see they're eating different things. And the other thing you can do is freeze this into a mix if you've got really picky fish or they're just not getting better, is you can make kind of like a Slurpee and use like blood worm juice, and then you can take those little blocks, cut them up, bash them up into kind of gel like rapashi would be or some of the other um, foods, and that way they eat it. And a lot of times, some fish won't eat cold stuff, but other ones will eat it, and they'll eat it so quickly that they don't even care, you know, that it's tastes bitter or gross. But hopefully that garlic in the tank will help mask that for them. So this is all you got to do. Then you give it time, let the, that all soak in for another 24 to 48 hours. Then you do a 50% water change, um, you know, wait a day. So it's been 48 hours since you dosed, and then you add another uh, two packets because it's a packet for every 10 gallons. And uh, for me, I like to, if it doesn't work dispersed in the water, that's when I mix it up with the food. So right now, as I see them eating, at least they're getting some of those granules straight into their bellies. So 
that's the little trick. Nothing proprietary. Just hope it helps if you guys have some sick fish and are trying to get them better. You don't know what's up with their stomachs being all sunken in. And this will not harm your shrimp or your plants. I have shrimp in here, uh, neocaridina shrimp and caridinas, as well as uh, uh, pleco and a marbled uh, a marbled uh, odo cinclus and lots of different plants so and everybody's doing okay and they've been through this treatment several times because this is the default quarantine tank lately all right guys well good luck uh i hope that this does your 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 fishies well and i hope that you guys are taking care of yourselves just as well and the people around you and uh that everybody's having a good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is while you watch this. See, they're finally eating. They like that Daphnia. Uh, Sarah makes the food The food company from Germany, Sarah, S-E-R-A, -E makes dried Daphnia, freeze-dried, so it just says F-D, let's see if we can get better lighting, F-D Daphnia. There we go. And it's pretty cheap usually. Uh, so, good snack. Gets, gets them to the top, works on most fish that are even like more shy fish, my erythromicrons and stuff like that I've used to treat with that. And you're on your way to health and happiness. Make sure you put prime in the water. Obviously, you don't want to get them sick with chlorine. And um, if you can, separate them. If anybody dies, get them out of the tank as quickly as possible. I was just looking and I was like, oh no, is that a dead fish? No, we're good. It is just a stick. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the easiest way, the best way. I know those meds are a little expensive. You can buy them online in bulk. Uh, or uh, I know Aquarium Co-op sells them in kind of a package together. So you can check that out. It's also the combo he uses and a lot of people at in the uh, greater Seattle area fish club use so all right guys i'll talk to you later if this helped you out like uh comment subscribe if you've got another way to do this that's easier please uh share it with me and i will talk to you guys later swim on bye